Um, I want to get rid of this red matte cap material too. I want something a little bit more science fiction-y while I'm working with it. Um, just so I can get a little better idea of my my final my final work with. So I'll go into this matte cap metal. Um, it's just, I mean, it's not that big of a deal. It's just a little easier to see. Matte caps, if you're dealing with custom lighting, um, you don't usually want to work with matte caps. You want to work with uh, some of your other guys down here. Um, but the matte caps are really good in general for getting nice visuals. So let's talk about masking. Um, masking is an excellent way to get detail out of ZBrush. Now, it would be pretty hard to paint or to pull out or to sculpt a triangle with just this brush. See, I have these shapes here. But by using a mask, I'm able to get that edge um, a lot easier. It's just, and I mean, I created it with the same thing. You know, it's the same thing. It's just how you use it. So with that being said, we're going to be uh, using masking to get our initial blocking done. Um, you hold control and it just automatically changes your brush to the mask. So whatever your brush size is, it'll just follow you there. Uh, another thing to keep in mind is you can hold control out of space and that will select a uh, little, little square which is usable. You know, there we go. I've got a nice little mass there. I mean, I'm going to be doing that a lot on this object. Um, another thing to keep in mind is if you don't end up with your edge on the object itself, um, what you're going to get is, uh, say you try to select nothing, clears your mask entirely. So it's useful, real useful. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and make our mask here. Um, I want to do a couple of these. And this is, you know, you'll, the more you get to use ZBrush, the more you'll enjoy it, um, I hope, because it is really just a very powerful program. Um, and it is, it's, it's a lot of fun to use uh, for, you know, an initial just, just going in and stepping in and being able to create things. Um, that's fine, that's good. Uh, I'll stick with this section for now. Um, I can do a couple things with my masking. One of the things I want to do is I want to go into my inverse here. You have a masking tab and you can do lots of stuff with this. And These tools are very useful, especially when you get into painting your objects and customizing your objects. I mean, it's going to be hugely, hugely useful for you. Um, what I did here is I switched <coughs> my mask and that's going to allow me to not only get a little bit of a different shape with these guys, um, but it will allow for a kind of, let's, let's do this here. One of these and then one of these two, just to be cheesy. Um, I kind of, it's not as sharp as I need it in some of these areas, so you can go ahead and Click Sharpen Mask, or Grow Mask, or Shrink Mask. There are lots of different things you can do. And they're pretty awesome to get what you need. Play with these, I recommend it. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select a different brush because this is a... It's a good brush, but it gets kind of inconsistent in areas. And so it's good for, like, um, if you wanted it to look like it was beat by a hammer, possibly or like cloth, folding cloth or something like that, but that's not what we want. We don't want it to always have a different grade. Um, and a good one to use is the layer brush. Now there are a lot of different ways to get uh, the effects that I'm going for here. Um, and this is just one of them. They're, you know, so play around with ZBrush as much as possible. I highly recommend it. Um, with the layer activated, uh, you know, I'm, I'm doing something here. But notice when, I, when I'm going over the same area once, as long as I haven't clicked twice, not to click twice, uh, it's going to stay even for you. So it's going to be really useful for, for when you want to just, you know, an even cut down into an object or something like that. Um, what I'll do here is I'll increase my intensity because that's just not, it's not pushing down as, as, as deep as I would like it. It's not as dramatic. Uh, of an effect as I would like. Um, and so how I'll do that is uh, turn my intensity up. Hold the space bar to pull up your little mini selector. Um, and 
go to town. So I'm holding Alt, and it's layering negative in the negative direction, reverse C. Um, that's pretty much what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to do this a couple times because I do want it. I do want it to, uh, to go down. And don't your edge there. Don't worry about that too much. We'll fix that here in a little bit. Um, okay, so that's you know it's okay. It's not as dramatic as I'd like really. So we'll go ahead and do it one more time. I'm starting to get a little bit of some funky detail there, but uh, it's not that big of a deal because I'll go through later and polish it and smooth it. I'm going to want to go through each of these here. Actually, let's not be so delicate and just do that. So we're starting to modify text a little bit, and it's okay. Turn off our view mask, and it's, you know, okay, whatever. Um, <clears throat> probably going to add some more detail and chop that stuff up a bit more. Uh, so we'll leave that how it is for now. Um, I'm going to go ahead and make some more of my areas that I'm going to be masking. So. Okay, let's see. I probably shouldn't have spent so much time on these details here, it's not that big of a deal. Um, so I guess we'll do a couple of these here. So we're just going through and kind of getting a little bit of a randomized, randomized look to it. Meet me. All right. Uh, control and Alt does a negative mask, by the way. So there we go. It's looking okay. It's looking okay at best. Not the most perfect job. Um, but this is just to get us started with uh, where we're going to put our other detail. We'll have to go through polish and smooth and some rust. All kinds of stuff. So. Just getting a little choppy here. And I just want to get that. Detail across. Again, you hold Alt uh, to reverse and go through here. You select off of your object in empty space and left click and that's how you rotate hold down alt and left click and that is how you move your object up or down okay so getting in here really want this stuff to be cut into um, One of the things that uh, we're going to be doing with this text 
is we're going to be going in and making all the different maps for it so it's usable anywhere we want it. You know, it doesn't matter what. If we're making a, a video for any means, we'd be able to export it and really get the detail we want. Um, and we're going to go beyond just the static uh, text as an object um, within one program and really have have something that we can use all over the place. That's one of the main goals with this. Okay. Getting there. Getting there, getting there. Going to continue to push in these areas. Um, I actually don't want to do that to the top, so it shouldn't. I'll just mask it up. It shouldn't be selected, actually. Um, more pressing, more pressing, more dramatic is what I want. Okay. So, we're getting some unique detail now out of this square desecration uh, to our text and uh, we're gonna go through and add <coughs> auto save it's a good feature don't don't hate on it it'll save you especially with ZBrush sometimes you'll push it to the limit and it'll crash it'll save you a lot um, Now we're going to add some screws, uh, sections for lights, coils, some kind of stuff I'm thinking. I'm not, I'm not too, 100% not positive even on how I'm going to execute this, uh, the final look here. I'll have some fun with it. Okay. Um, I've chopped into it. Good. We'll clear the mask. And uh, that's, that's good. I'm, I like that. I'm, we're starting to get somewhere in regards to surface detail. Um, what I want to do now is I want to go through and polish out some of these areas and then refine and add further details within each of these individual sections. And I'll, I'm, I'm just going to be playing around with, uh, you know, different tools and uh, different options that we can use here. Um, the first one I think I'll use is the flatten, and we'll see what that's going to do for us. It's going to give us a pretty not flat deal, and that's because I went a little too aggressive with it. Uh, with one of, one of the reasons. Oh, excuse me, it's planar. That's my issue. Boom. That's what we want. Planar. Where the money's at. So we have the planar brush selected, and uh, we're going through and leveling out all the surface detail. Um, now, what the planar brush does is it, from the first place you select, it flattens everything it touches. Okay, very useful tool. So you want to select an area you like. And you can move around and boom, there you go. Um, it's just real important to know that it's from the first area that you select. That's what it's all about right there. So there we go. We got it. Chopping into it. Getting our stuff even. Getting it ready to modify it later. Um, Going to be a real useful tool for you uh, if you're doing robotics or hard surfaces. Because... You know, the ZBrush has come a long way in hard surfaces. So go through, get your stuff, get your stuff level well nicely, you don't need to micro. I shouldn't have to micro this. When, um, I'm using the final brushes, we'll get everything even. But, this is confusing a little bit too much, because there's large sections left, so, it's a problem. Okay. Alright, okay. So this guy... Uh, there's a little, he's having issues on me, he's having issues with me here. Just run a stream of flatten across it so I can have a little bit, something a little bit easier to work with. I'm going to go back to my cleaner. Again, this is the planer tool. Magnus and planer tool. And, uh, there we go. That's better. I just have to go from this direction. Get into it. Oop, that's a big, 
it's all not desired. Actually, at first, the sweeper activity on is not desired. There we go. And that is, you can just drive across. It's really efficient. Take a look at this, guys. Acting funny. This looks like this one might be the spots. Nope. Is it this? This one might be the spot? Yeah. So, there you have it. Uh, good. And... That's one. Okay, sometimes it's a little bit getting started, but it's no big deal. Uh, if you have an issue like this where it's just you don't want to cut that deep into your object, uh, your clay tubes are a good good option there. You can just fill it up. Fill it up. And once you know you have it past your even point, go back to your planer and... Uh, there you go. So, fill the hole. Um. Okay, we're going to continue over here. This is, you know, it's a bit tedious. Um, but at the same time, that's what we're doing. We're sculpting the ZBrush, so that's it's a pleasure. Okay. Some of this stuff I actually kind of like, and sometimes you might want to leave it on, um, because it can add a bit of like a texture variance for certain elements. Rocks, it's okay. You know, other things, it's okay. Kind of as a foundation to start with. Um, I thought about initially saving it, um, and then more of a crack in the middle, but I'm not going to do that. I have an issue, again, but I don't want to go too far down, so I'll just fill it up. It really doesn't matter how far you fill it up, because you just drop it, you drop it right at me. So, well, this guy's going to be a little bit on me. Okay, so I'm going to fill it up with a little bit of Two little dots here. Actually, I'm wasting time. Um, okay, so we'll remove all this here. My angle is a little too strict, but this is fine. Interesting. Okay. Kind of like that. A little bit of an angle there. We'll keep it. Kind of like that too. Okay, uh... There we go. So, it's okay. Uh, it's not as good frame. It's not as torn up looking outside of this guy right here. How'd that happen? Okay, well for a second time I'm going to just start rolling with these punches um, and not go through really the TDM and all these. Okay, so I went through and smooth, um, kept some areas rough, uh, put some angles in some areas, but now we're going to go through and, and add uh, even more detail. <coughs> um, so we'll do with screws first and metal plating and kind of doing using the flatten tool uh, to give us some more edges. And... Uh, Let's just experiment here. So we'll go in here and grab our flatten brush. And let's 
through some of this right here on this curve. It's a little, it's a little too heavy for what I wanted. Um, all I wanted is one of these lines here. And what I'm going to do with that is I'm going to go back into my planer brush. And when I use this on my edge here, that's going to give me a nice, you know, it's a nice chopped edge here for, for what I'm doing especially. It's, it'll be good. It'll be real good for what I want. And so I'm just going to go through with this flatten and mark, if you will, um, all these different curves. So I can uh, go through and just, and I'm only going to do that on these edges. And this is going to kind of show the the flatten brush and the polish brush in combination with each other, the planer brush in combination with each other. They're really, they're a good team. They're a good team. So I don't mind if everything I'm doing isn't super geometric now because I kind of want... Um, I'm going to want the object to have a little bit more interest than just something super geometric, static, plain. Um, I'm, you know, initially I was thinking about putting grass on this. It's a little, a little freeform here, and I also don't want to waste a lot of time making sure everything's exact. Um, <clears throat> okay, I'm okay with that detail. That's just a good thing to know for adding detail uh, in any circumstance. Uh, let's go back to my layer tool, and uh, we want to make some screw holes in some areas. And what this uh, what this is going to do is it's going to um, allow me to really control my height on objects. It's the best thing about it. And so here on your brush, you have your your brush, which is selected, your stroke, and then your alpha. Uh, we'll keep the alpha, it's fine. The stroke is what we want to mess with right now. We want to change that from dots to drag dot. And what that does is it just gives us one dot that we drag around. Now, it's when we make it, it still creates a little nice detail for us. Um, this, the drag dot is real nice, I find, for making screw holes um, and things of that nature. They're, they're actually uh, ZBrush... Um, these IMMs here, which you can append to your object, <clears throat> and they, uh, they're they full on, you know, bits of clothing, screws, all kinds of stuff that you would need. So, this is more along the lines of using the brushes than how to make the best looking screw. Uh, but with that being said, let's make the plates first that we'll be dealing with. Um, there are several ways uh, to do this. Um, I think I'm gonna, just going to use the slash slash tool. It's it's a pretty solid guy there. Um, and what you have here is this is the default. That's good. That's a little thick for me, so I'll hold down space, reduce it, and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and draw my plate. Something like that. And that would be come to this end. plate here, a little roundish corner, um, I don't like that, a little too roundish, a little wonky. Um, okay, so starting to get Starting to get a little bit of a, a detail there. Uh, let's go ahead and add my first layer. And by holding Alt again, you set the negative distance on your tool. Um, and so I'll do one impression where I want my screw holes. So that's here. Right now. Some of these. It's a 
malformed domino. Um, we'll go ahead and add another one. Hold space and make the your circle a little smaller, and you start to make it look a little bit more like a plate um, than it was. So I'm gonna go kind of add a little detail to the center piece there, uh, and then you just zoom in, move around, move to my screw, get a real tiny. Change it to a dot, and I'm just going to divide a line here. I just like how that divided. Again, that's it's all about your divisions, uh, your your polyframe there. You know, divide it along something that's easy for it to handle. Okay, seems like laterals. Go to. Um, so, this is just real easy. A couple different tools, um, a couple different, uh, you know, brushes there, and uh, you're starting to get what would appear to be, especially from i go like that. If all this stuff was metal, we're going to get some nice metal detail here. So I'll go through and, and add a couple more details, and uh, we'll see. We'll see what we end up with.